Yes, which was pretty awesome. You are now listening to the Voices of Dubai. And you're listening to Watching the Voices of Dubai with Joe Hutch. This is the Voices of Dubai. Katie, thank you so much for joining me today on the Voices of Dubai. I was doing my hair. I didn't know realize we started, but yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. It's been thanks. such a long time since we've actually seen each other in person. Yep. I think it was 2018, <laughs> if I'm okay. not mistaken. I was at Soundstruck. Did you write it in your diary? It no, was such oh, a yeah. day. It's that day we met, I met Katie. Oh my God. It happens a lot. I was <laughs> Soundstruck. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we actually met before that uh, at Mango Jam. Mango Jam, yeah. Yeah, very briefly. Mm. And thanks to you, I, um, I met Faris. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Joe Ogden. Yes. And actually, Faris was one of our uh, guests as well. He so, was. Uh, Faris owes a lot to me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Message to Faris. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he would actually tell you that himself, which yeah, he is did. quite funny. He actually oh, did. did. He? Yeah, he actually did. I love him. I have a lot of time for Faris. Hmm. So, Katie, please tell, tell us a little bit about your background. Like, since you graduated from school... Up until I'm so pleased you said school because I didn't go to college. Okay, great. Um, gosh, I mean, yeah, I, I was very much, I've never really been an academic kind of person. So I was at school, I was that person that the report card was, she would be amazing if she didn't talk so much and distract the class. And I'm like, yeah, look at me now. Look how much I'm talking now. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I never really wanted to, I was going to say be anything. I know I didn't have aspirations of going to university and getting a degree and stuff like that. I never did. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, I wanted to be a real estate agent my whole life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> legitimately. W what sparked that interest for you? Like? Okay, so I really liked people. I loved talking to people. I, my parents were amazing in terms of they would always, even as a young child, just encourage me to go and talk to that group of friends. As oh. embarrassing as that, it, you know, just go and talk to them. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But then you get grow the confidence to go over there because mm -hmm. your parents have pretty much forced you to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also really like admin and, you know, paperwork and things. So oh, at really? the time, and because of m my age and my generation, was kind of, I left school in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. So it was a case of um, I could either be an estate agent, as it was known in the UK, or a travel agent. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I went into a estate agency, which is quite handy because there's no such real thing as a travel agent really anymore. Nice. Unless you're rich. Mm, yeah, unless you're rich. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a nice thing. So yeah, anyway, went into, and I did real estate, Lost my job in 2008, moved to Dubai. Two of my brothers already lived here, so moved over here then. Um, I was working for a sports company, wasn't in the media at all. And I was invited onto Dubai Eyes The Grill, which is their sports program on Dubai Eye 103.8 radio, to talk about sport and uh, sport in the community and Dubai and things like that. And that's exactly what I was doing and involved in. Mm -hmm. And I just loved it. I've got, I got the buzz for it. Mm -hmm. So they then asked me to come back and I was on the radio for the Dubai Rugby Sevens. Wow. Um, I then was a reporter for the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships, which then happens in the January. And I just got this real buzz for media, I suppose, and radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just pursued and pursued and emailed Dubai 92 for like two years until they let me come in and do a demo. That is awesome. <laughs> so in the meantime, will you, were you still working in real estate? Like No, I'd left real estate back in, I only did it for about a year or so. So I left there in like kind of 2009, because as I always say this, I came to Dubai with 10 years real estate experience and I brought with me my professionalism and my integrity and you didn't need that in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, in real estate in Dubai. So I didn't really last very long. Mm -hmm. It was a real dog eat dog world and it was all about chasing the money. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'd come from real estate where it was actually making sure that you got the house that you wanted mm -hmm. in the school catchment area with the right train line and the bus blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and you don't need that here, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that all changed. So I wasn't working in that. So I went into radio. I was working working for um, a PR and events company, corporate communications company. So I was doing that five days a week and then I was doing the radio at the weekend. So I did seven days a week for about, it was about a year and a half, mm -hmm. but a little bit less actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then one day got, realized I needed the fear mm -hmm. to leave. And I thought, well, I'm never gonna pursue a career in the media if I've got this good job that's paying me a good salary. As a backup. As a backup. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I quit my job just like that. 
Wow. Yeah. That, is... What sparked that uh, <laughs> that uh, that feeling of just like okay. I'm quitting my full time <laughs> yeah. in order to uh, focus on what I love. What, what's well, it's, a fun, it's actually a funny story because I think it resonates with so many people and especially in Dubai because the work ethic here and especially when our weekends changed, now most people are working a seven day week, mm -hmm. was I was on holiday in Zanzibar and I'd done my full handover, you know, I worked for a corporate full handover, um, speak to this person for this, this person for this or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is where everything is. And there was no Wi-Fi at our kind of resort when you're by the beach, mm. got back up to kind of uh, to the room, and the Wi-Fi came on and then ping, 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 all these emails came through. And it was all things that people didn't need to contact me for. It was just pure laziness, you know, mm. oh, where is where was this presentation deck saved? And mm. did you speak to, it? yes, it's all in my handover document, it's mm. all there. Mm. And so I just replied and I resigned then and there wow. in in the lobby of the, of the hotel. In, okay in Ras Nungwi, in uh, Zanzibar. Wow. And my boss didn't accept it at the time. She was like, no, 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 we'll talk about this when you're back. And I was like, okay. I, I have a lot of respect for, for my boss, I still do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, but I needed it. Mm -hmm. So then actually she, that she was super supportive, Camilla Darbo and Lucy Darbo, I'll give them a shout out. They were so supportive. They then worked with me to go to part-time hours mm -hmm. at the communications company to enable me to then get more work in radio. Wow. And then worked around that, and then I eventually left. That there. is awesome. Yeah, and moved into radio. That is awesome. And then at the same time, the kind of voiceover thing came at the same time, and then emceeing and hosting events and being a presenter all came. It was really strange. It all happened around the same time. Wow. Um, so I went from, you know, just kind of being business development and sales mm -hmm. to then using my voice to earn, earn me money. How awesome is that? Yeah, it's amazing because now I get to work from home in my pajamas with my cat on the desk mm -hmm. and earn money. Yeah, I saw that. I yes. saw your cat. <laughs> yeah, often. Yeah, they do get involved. Do you remember your first ever voiceover project? I remember one of them. Um, it was at BKP Studios with a guy called Chris Atkins, who now owns With Feeling, with who feeling, started yes. With Feeling. Very good friend of mine. Shout out to Chris Atkins. Yeah, absolute shout out to Chris Atkins. He's a good guy, yes. super supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, he made me as a new voice talent feel super, super calm. Mm. Um, I'd already done my demos with Mango Jam. Again, huge shout out to Will to and Will, Ashinth yes. and, and Kay at Mango Jam. Like they're all amazing. Absolutely. So I did my demos with them and they were so nice to kind of guide me through it because I listened to some of my first demos now and it's so funny. Like they're so cringe. Mm. Um, but they did the job. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my first ones was for a telecommunications company in Dubai. <laughs> there are only two. Oh, no, there's three now. But the, in 2014, there was only two. So mm -hmm. it was one of them. And it was with another talent, which was actually quite unusual. And it's still quite unusual for you to record in the booth at the same time, right? You're oh, two people at the same yeah. time. Yeah, usually they do them back to back or... Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do remember is that I was, you know, this keen bean and again, my professionalism. So I turned up on time and I was there and ready to rock and roll. And I'd read the script and, you know, like full nerd version. Mm -hmm. And this guy turned up really late. And then he just, he didn't have sort of a, a good flow to him. I think he was just super nervous and Chris okay. was trying to do his best to calm him down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to as well, but I also felt a bit weird because I was also a newbie. Mm -hmm. So who am I mm -hmm. to be like, okay, like, you know, we can do this together. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just took a really, really long time because he, it's, I'm not saying he was bad, but what I meant was he was just nervous. Sure. Um, but I think it was just him being late and obviously the room was full of clients, the copywriter was there, the agency, the client itself, you know the drill. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think he just felt under pressure from there. So, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason it was good was because I nailed it. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I didn't, but perhaps compared to this guy, that sounds really bad. I was like, God, I'm really good at this. <laughs> but it could have just been a super average project. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you find that this project uh, boosted your confidence uh, and enabled you to have more confidence when showing up to new sessions after? Good question. Like, as I said, I've always had a lot of confidence. It's mm -hmm. been instilled in me from childhood mm -hmm. to have confidence, very much confidence over arrogance. Obviously, as you know, huge difference. Absolutely. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I was very fortunate to work with amazing studios. Mm -hmm. 
Mango Jam and BKP, like I've mentioned, and um, Sounds Struck and Sounds Great. You know, people where I'm working with engineers like yourself that will almost have the talents back over the client. Mm -hmm. Now, whether clients want to hear that or not, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's important that your talent is super relaxed and at ease mm -hmm. because they're the ones delivering your product, Absolutely. right? So it would be for the likes of yourselves as an engineer. And when you're looking, sometimes when you're in these small booths and you're looking through those little hatches and you're my only connection. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, I need to have trust in you mm -hmm. for me to be able to do it. So again, I think I was lucky with the engineers that I was put with. Awesome. I mean, you've got the likes of a chint at Mango Jam who mm -hmm. still has... Um, uh, a blooper reel of mm. mine of like every time I do something wrong or say something silly or I laugh out loud and he's mm. got it because we would have such a laugh about it mm -hmm. and that makes you relaxed as well so nice. yeah nice. and then ever since then I just yeah I just go in like a bull in a china shop and just do a job saying that I haven't done an in studio one since uh, 2019 right since wow. pre-covid yeah, so yeah yeah that's crazy yeah and what are some of the initial challenges that you faced when first entering the voiceover industry. Now, I know for you, like, confidence was not, mm -hmm. was not a problem. Yeah. You mentioned that your parents instilled that um, outgoing personality. Yeah. And, like, ever since I've known you, you've been this outgoing person yeah. and you're, you're talkative, you like to, you're interested in people, basically. And one can tell. So what are the challenges that you faced uh, when first entering the voiceover industry? Honestly, I think it's one that most voice people, whether it's radio or even TV, and, I, and, and even I'm quite conscious of it even now, because when you put a pair of headphones on and a micro, microphone in front of you, automatically your voice changes. Mm -hmm. So the, the generation above us, our parents' generation, we would call it a telephone voice, right? Mm -hmm. So my mum would talk as I am now to you. If the phone rang, she'd go, hello, mm -hmm. hello, absolutely. And I'm like, where is it? Who is that voice? Like, yeah. why is it putting it on? Mm -hmm. um, so I think I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it was a challenge. <laughs> the irony that I can't speak. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a challenge, but just kind of being a bit more natural. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you're in a booth and with a microphone in front of you and you're given a script, all of a sudden you kind of start speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Unless mm -hmm. the client has called for it. Like, why are sure, you speaking sure. like that? Mm -hmm. So... And actually, a, a, a funny story, if I may digress, is when I worked for Dance FM, I was uh, name drop, clang. I had to interview Fatboy Slim, if you know him. Oh, cool. Yes, I do. And it was a phone recorded interview um, off air, obviously. Mm -hmm. And one of our new presenters, she said, would you mind if I sat in with you on the interview? Mm -hmm. Absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Now, Fatboy Slim, Norman Cook, is from about 45 minutes away from where I'm from down in East Sussex. He's from Brighton. So we immediately kind of hit it off, right? Mm -hmm. And we had a 30-minute chat on the phone and we were chatting away. Finished the conversation and I did it as, did some links as well, you know, coming up on Dance with them. Da, da, da. When I finished the conversation, the, the other presenter, she was like, is that your real accent? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. because I was so relaxed with him. I'd mm -hmm. gone, as, as you will hear probably during the duration of our conversation, mm -hmm. I'd gone from kind of being a bit radio in, but hey, Fatboy Slim, how's it going? To mm -hmm. just chatting to him as I would do normally. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? With your uh, ac regular accent. With my regular accent, mm -hmm. which isn't bottle of water. Mm -hmm. We don't all speak like that. Okay. Like, that is not how the English speak. How would you say bottle of water? I say bottle of water. Bottle of water. Sometimes I actually say bottle. Oh, okay. Which is a, like almost like a hybrid of, of the two. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I drop my T's mm -hmm. as well as the next person because my dad was from London. Well, so was my mum, actually. So there was uh, there is certain parts of me even now that I will talk and drop my T's and not speak super mm -hmm correctly, which my mum would hate. She'd turn in her grave if she heard me when I say it. <laughs> but yeah, we don't say bottle of water and we don't say Harry Potter. You know, it's yeah, not, yeah. that's not how we talk. Yeah, and yeah. you're smiling because you <laughs> think that all English people speak like that. But I love it. It's a, it's a, um, I like the accent. You know, do yeah. you know Guy Ritchie, the director? Not personally. Although I did interview him last year. Did you? I did. He, they wow. came here for the premiere of one of his movies. So I interviewed him and Jason Statham. Nice. And a good rapper called Bugsy Malone. Which which movie was it? Do you, do you remember? Uh, Lockstock? No, uh, no, no. It was last year it came out and they had their premiere in Dubai. Oh, uh, last year. Oh, and it's got Hugh Grant in it. He played like the bad guy. Yes, yes. Come it, on, you've got it. It rings a bell. It's at the tip of my tongue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, it was yeah. that. So I did interview, and he's very much kind of like that, isn't he? Okay. All of his kind of movies are all like that. Mm. And it's funny because. I do a lot of work for voiceovers globally online. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a lot of clients, mainly from North America and Canada. Mm -hmm. They will ask for a Cockney accent. Yeah. Now, a Cockney accent is so specific. Mm -hmm. So a Cockney accent is really if you're born within the sound of the Bow Bells in East London, mm -hmm. which is a very small population. But what they mean by Cockney is just someone just a little bit more relaxed mm -hmm. and like, relatable now in terms of like a London accent. Okay. And I'm literally like, you don't want Cockney. They think of like, hello, Mary Poppins. Yeah. You know, like the guy out of me. Like, no one really talks like that anymore. Yeah. But they say to me, they're like, oh, we really want a Cockney accent. I'm like, no, you don't. Mm. But It's funny because when I think of a Cockney accent, I think of, uh, well, we just spoke about his movies, you know, yeah. like uh, Lockstock yeah. and Two Smoking Barrels yeah. or Snatch. Yeah. And Who took the jam out of your donut? And all yeah, that. exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> or Boris the Bullet Dodger. Why do they call him the Bullet Dodger? Because, Harry, he dodges bullets. <laughs> because, Harry, he dodges bullets. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a really, it's really interesting. But it's such a, it's such a good accent. Mm. It's, uh, it's very unique. It is unique, mm. I think, yeah. Mm. It's good fun. And Katie, was there a, a memorable session that really stood out for you? Or let's say a challenging session that you remember to this day? I, I don't know if we spoke about this before, but I can't even remember what I said then. But what springs to mind is um, and the first and only voiceover I've ever declined to do mm. as well, which is in Dubai, mm -hmm. um, whereby I was obviously booked based on my demos and I went into the, the studio. Mm -hmm. I was given the script. It was for a fertility clinic. No issues with that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge thing around the world and obviously in the UAE. Mm -hmm. The script, however, was really demeaning. Um, How so? To the point where obviously I was playing the woman mm -hmm. um, where, and the script was along the lines of I was going to the fertility clinic because I wasn't able to have children. I was letting my family down and my husband down mm. and I needed... And I'm like, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. If a woman can't conceive due to any reason, mm -hmm. that's not a shame on her. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have many friends that have gone through fertility and IVF and stuff. And But it was the script was really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually refused to do it cause, because I didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Equally... As I, as I know you know, we're always asked whether we're happy or, com or, or comfortable doing um, scripts to do with alcohol, to do with tobacco, and to do with religion sure. and politics, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some you agree to, some you don't, and that's down to you. Mm -hmm. So whereby I was happy to do a fertility clinic advert, mm -hmm. the way it was so demeaning mm -hmm. to this female I was portraying, mm -hmm. I, I, I said no. Wow. And finally, was it during the during the recording that you saw the script? 100%, yeah. Oh, yeah. I arrived on, on site. Yeah, yeah. So, and actually they had to pay me so, yeah, because yeah. they booked me. For your time, yeah. And then equally, a uh, famous voice that we know in Dubai, Peter Crawford, mm -hmm. I actually had to do um, uh, a spot with, uh, excuse me, a recording with Peter Crawford. And even he said to me, he was there before me, and he said, I've had a look at the script. Are you happy to do this? Mm -hmm. Because it was a, a typical husband and wife. Darling, have you seen there's a sale on uh, did you do this weekend? But it was really patronizing to the woman. Okay. And it was like him going, oh, darling, don't be silly. And he was like, it's awful. So he actually raised it with the client. And he mm -hmm. said, this script is, is not nice at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just said, you know what? At this point, it was not too bad. Mm -hmm. It was okay. And I'd had this fertility clinic one years ago that I'd kind of benchmarked it to. It was okay. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting that Peter, as a professional voice talent and a man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also flagged it. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of stick out in my mind. In terms of actually recording, <laughs> I, I had one that was... Um, um, the t uh, I want to say like... Gal no, it wasn't Galaxy. The Taste of Paradise? Uh. What's that? Taste of Paradise. Well, it's some kind of shampoo or something. Anyway, it was a... Herbal essences? Uh, something like that. And I'm sure it was the Taste of Paradise was their strap line, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd done the, the, the recording and then it was a Taste of Paradise. Mm -hmm. A Taste of Paradise. A Taste of Paradise, right? Mm -hmm. And then the client's like, could you do it a little more, whatever, wispy? Sure. 
a taste of paradise. Mm -hmm. Could you do it a little more? And so what was funny was, and I go, I hopefully if this is a visual one, if people do watch it as opposed to listen to this episode, is I'm looking at, it was actually a chinth from Mango Jam. I'm looking at him, but the client's behind. So a chinth is looking at me going, this is going to be like a long session for you. <laughs> and I think we recorded over 20 options. Of that same tagline. Of that same tagline. And they went with take number two. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know the drill. A classic. Um, I've also had a lot of, can you be less British? Now, I get that a lot. Mm. Um, and also, uh, a quick point is, is a massive, a massive uh, pet peeve for me, is that there's actually no such thing as a British accent. Mm. I'm English, which is vastly different to a Scottish accent, a Welsh accent, and a Nor Northern Irish accent. Mm -hmm. um, so a British accent is so vast, mm -hmm. but you get it a lot in Dubai, right? Yes. Can you be less British? Not really, because I'm British. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't do American accents anymore because I used to do when I started because I thought I needed to do diversify. And now when I hear my American accent from like 10 years ago, I'm like, who hired me? Um, but I did have one recently and they said, oh, it's just the brand is an American brand. Mm -hmm. So I said, OK, well, that's strange because I'd, I'd seen the, the script and the roster and I knew that the other three VOs were all British. Mm -hmm. And I said, but you've hired four British VOs. Mm -hmm. For an American brand. For an American brand that didn't want British accents. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've got the likes of Faris al who does a really good uh, American accent, so I messaged him. He was like, no, they haven't told me they wanted it American. Mm -hmm. So he was going into a session thinking he was going in with an English accent. Okay. But I'm like, I don't, you, you've heard my demos, mm -hmm. and you know who I am, and I'm, I am a British MC, voiceover, whatever. Mm -hmm. And now you want me to be less British. I Get it in terms of almost this whole Midlantic accent, mm -hmm. right? Neutral. So, neutral. Mm. So they don't want me to be all very British and very Harry Potter and mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. which I wasn't anyway, mm. but then to be less British. So yeah, it is, that's all. Because sometimes I just know, I hear it and they're like, we love your accent, great accent. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but, but it's what it's exactly, coming. Exactly, yeah, but. And wait, you want me to be less British, don't you? Yeah. They're like, yes, exactly. Sorry we have to ask you for that, Katie. Yeah. yeah, it's just really funny. And there is the fine line as well. And this is where we've spoken at great length as to how you deal with people and how you come across to people. If they're a nice client or a nice agency or a nice sound engineer, mm -hmm. I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. Why not? We might come to some happy medium that you're happy with and sure. you think is a bit more neutral. Sure. But sometimes people really do speak to you in the most bizarre way where I'm like, mm -hmm. no. Do you, mean, <laughs> do you mean with an attitude or... A... Kind of, just a bit rude. Yeah. And almost like it's my fault mm. as well. Where mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, and, and I mean this with the greatest of respect and hence why I've been very successful knocking on the door, uh, knocking on the table as a, as a voice art artist for 10 years is I am good at what I do. Mm -hmm. and, and Chris from With Feeling always calls me, you know, the one take wonder. He loves booking me because he knows it's going to be a quick session. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why it frustrates me then when people speak to it. Yeah, see, so what I'm really looking for, and they kind of, and I'm like, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not going to do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> In the back of your mind, right? No, I say it out loud across the microphone, no, yeah. just so the sound engineer can hear. I don't like this person. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't do that. They must be laughing with their headphones. Yeah. You know, like, <sighs> but it's true, right? You treat people how you'd like to be treated yeah, in anything. And, and you, you would kind of bend over backwards for them. Mm -hmm. And again, case in point where, for example, sometimes, I don't know part of the script is mildly wrong. They want to change it from dollars to dirhams or mm -hmm. a word is wrong slightly. Mm -hmm. As you know, if it's not the talent's uh, fault and it's a change in script, then therefore, therefore you should charge, et cetera. Mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. No problem. If yeah. you're nice, no, no skin off my nose, I'm in the studio anyway, happy to do it. Sure, sure. But if some people are, I'm like, yeah, With an attitude. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's an extra challenge. Yeah. <laughs> new script, new <laughs> rate. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your tagline. The voices of Dubai. <laughs> no, ours is empowering voices, inspiring hearts. Oh, is it actually? It is. That's nice. You should get us all to record that for you. I'd love that. Actually, I'll get you to record the outro uh, just a bit. I don't want to spoil it uh, for our viewers Fine. just yet. Okay. But at the end, it's coming. I'm going to ask you for a Cockney accent. Get oh, ready. God. <laughs> I'm not here for it. <laughs> the voices of Dubai, mate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Pass me the bottle of water. <laughs> bottle of water. Yeah. Although it's funny because my because my um, godmother, if you like, um, she would call me Katie. Katie. Like, because it's a, yeah. Oh, hi, Katie. How's it going? And my mum would be like, "That's not her name. There's two syllables. Pronounce them both." Kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why did you remove the T? I wonder. Yeah, exactly. And Katie. Katie. Yeah, it's a weird one. So Katie. Yeah. I'm I'm, uh, I'm curious. <laughs> How did uh, your experience as a live event MC? You've been doing a lot of these lately. Like I, I'm seeing, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Uh, a professional voiceover talent, a radio and TV presenter. How have all these experiences and jobs and projects helped you in your career as a professional voiceover actor? Interesting, because even now people still don't. Re- I think I, I think I voice over in the shadows or something, and perhaps I'm not promoting myself as much as I should. Because to me, um, promoting yourself as a voiceover on social media is actually quite difficult to mm. do. Mm. Whereas obviously, TV and live events, there's content all the time, so you can just bosh that out on social media. Um, but the reason I, I state that is because I had um, a phone call last week saying. We have a last minute voiceover request and it was from a, um, a talent agency where they were doing some choreography mm. to, a, to some music and they needed a voiceover for the text to go with the screen, okay. da, da, da. Okay. Absolutely no problem. Are you able to do it today? It's the last minute. Yep, fine. So they sent me the script and I was like, I'm hosting this tonight. Wow. So the client who'd hosted me as the master of ceremonies didn't realize I was a voiceover. Mm-hmm. Um, which was, I hope they don't listen to this, but obviously they've had to then pay me twice. Whereas if they'd have gone, would you mind recording this? I'd be like, sure, I'll include it in my fee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I loved it, obviously. Of course. So then it was quite interesting then when apparently they sent across, or rather they played it out at rehearsals. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. my client was like, that's you. And I was like, yeah. "Yeah." So it is weird. Um, I mean, I guess they all are much of a muchness. Mm-hmm. The TV presenting only came from 2021 when I moved into to Expo TV, mm-hmm. to live TV. So weirdly, the transition from radio to TV was quite difficult. Mm-hmm. And actually, the transition from radio in 2014 um, at Dubai 92 to then Dance FM in 2017, whereby then we then had cameras in the studio. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. even that whole thing changed. First mm-hmm. of all, I'm on a breakfast show, so I can't go in looking like crap mm-hmm. <laughs> at five in the morning. I'm yeah. like, oh, I've actually got to put some makeup on. That's annoying. So that's the difference. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then as you know, on radio, we can signal to each other mm-hmm. when to wrap up a story, mm-hmm. when we've got to cut to the news mm-hmm. or, a, or mm-hmm. a commercial break or something. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden that whole dy- dynamic changed when you've got cameras right in your face mm-hmm. because there's one on each presenter. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that was quite interesting, I suppose. Did you find any challenges moving from radio where your face is hidden to TV where all of a sudden, you know, lights are on you, camera, action? Um, not really, mm. I suppose, because, the, the, you know, the pressure mm. of live radio and, and then onto live TV is mm. equally as daunting, mm-hmm. I suppose. Okay. Um, mm. The one thing being on television, you have your earpiece Mm -hmm. with your producer and your director in. That took a lot Mm -hmm. for me to to get used to. And I was actually, um, shout out to Reem Elhouni, Elhouni, excuse me, um, who was my executive producer who got me on board for Expo TV. Mm -hmm. She, it was like a baptism of fire, Joe. Like we did this trial. She's like, I need to, you know, we need to test you out how you are with an earpiece. Mm -hmm. So... It's live TV and I'm delivering whatever I'm talking to the camera about Mm -hmm. whilst she's talking to me in the, in my ear as faking what was happening, Mm -hmm. saying, okay, um, his highness Sheikh Mohammed is arriving. So you're going to have to wrap it up now. So you start to wrap up and then she goes, no, he's like, he's gone off into a meeting room. You know, you've got a pad for another minute. So, okay. So you do. And she was doing, and obviously she, she was doing it over the top for sure, me to, sure, to sure. do it. Of course. I was like, the back of my, I was like sweating and everything. And it was crazy. Um, and it was okay. But that sounds really interesting. Like It was intense though. Mm. And, but, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't perfect. And in fact, it was probably, it was maybe after five months of live TV every day. Mm-hmm. Um, on Expo TV, our show was called Studio Expo, whereby we had a quiz. I would go out and about at Expo and find two members of the public, and it was 30 seconds each as mar- answer mm-hmm. as many questions about Expo as possible. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you've got your producer in your ear mm-hmm. saying, you know, the countdown's this, and, like, timer, timer's done, timer's done, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it was quite funny uh, because I was doing the questions and she's like, time is up, time is up. But I, this lady was just finishing her question. Mm -hmm. And I looked dead, and I'm going to do it here. I looked dead into the camera and I went, I know. <laughs> I know. On live TV. You answered your producer. I answered my producer, but like directly to the camera as well. Not just like, because obviously your silent nods, your producer will say, you've got 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more questions, for example? And you yep. would just nod mm -hmm. because that's your signal to her mm -hmm. or him but it was Ronza at the time. And I was just like, I know. <laughs> and the minute, Joe, the minute I did it, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've done this. Finished the thing, wrapped up. That's, that, that's all from me, you know, back to you in the studio, whatever. We come back to, to the office afterwards to have a debrief. Obviously I knew straight away, right? Mm -hmm. So Reem called me to one side and, and Ronza did. And I went, I know what you're gonna say. And, mm -hmm. I was mortified, and there's a, a point to this that I'll come back to. And she was like, it's fine, it's, it's fine. You will literally, you will never do that again because it's so emblazoned of course. in your brain. Mm -hmm. And one of my biggest things is any mistakes you've made on radio, or live radio, live TV, of which I've done many, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't take callers live on air in mm -hmm. Dubai. Mm -hmm. Should they say something wrong or swear or say something that we're not allowed to speak about out loud? So you record them off air mm -hmm. and you switch the desk over. How many times have we not not pressed the last button? Mm -hmm. So I've taken a caller out over a song and mm -hmm. everyone can hear it in the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's mortifying. Oh, I bet. But um, someone said to me, they were like, yeah, but did anyone die? Mm -hmm. And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. No one died. Mm -hmm. And so that is a real like mantra that I mm -hmm. live by. You know, mm -hmm. me looking down the camera on live TV like, I know, yeah, and my yeah. producer. It's awful and it's horrible and I won't do it again. But did anyone die? No. Yeah, yeah. Get on with life. Did you, did you blame yourself for that? For oh, your yeah, mistakes? Oh, yeah, awful. Really? Yeah. And Ronza, my producer, wasn't, wasn't doing anything different. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, I mean, she, she was badgering in my ear, but that's what she was would do anyway because the timer was up sure. and we have to wrap and being expo a dignitary could have arrived and it could have cut or whatever mm -hmm. there were so many reasons to it yeah, so yeah. it was just my pure panic mm -hmm. of, i know <laughs> looking into the camera i know dead into the thing as well yeah that's funny katie I'm, is I'm, it <laughs> i mean maybe not for you at that point at that point yeah but i'm sure looking back in retrospect Hilarious. That was a lesson for you, right? Hilarious. To the point where Reem now uses it in her presenter courses. Wow. Her TV presenter courses. And I saw it once. I wasn't at the first one, sadly. And I was like, you're talking about me then, aren't you? <laughs> Damn it. She should tag you every time she mentions <laughs> yeah. it. No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not know. Katie, I'm curious for our viewers and listeners. You do so many things in your day. Mm. Like, uh, I know you to be a very uh, extroverted, number one extroverted person uh, and you're always busy and productive I would say rather than busy some and some yeah I'm, I'm glad curious. that's the impression I mean got. that's the impression I've got yeah for sure <laughs> nailing it and I'm curious how do you manage your time effectively to make sure that you're being as productive in all these different areas of your life it's very interesting because I'm not as productive as you perhaps think. Mm. However, um, a very good friend of mine, Nimi, just bought me a planner, uh, the productivity method planner, broken down into three things, which is if something's going to take five minutes, it's a, a quick tick. Mm -hmm. So that goes in one column. Okay. So I love a to-do list, but this has really helped me. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to take less than five minutes, it's a quick tick. If it's going to take you say like five minutes to 30 minutes, mm -hmm. that's a task. Mm -hmm. So that goes in a different column. Mm -hmm. And if it's a project, mm -hmm. you know, uh, say creating a voiceover demo, mm -hmm. that's gonna take me way longer than 30 minutes. Sure. So that goes in my project column. Mm -hmm. But to get to that project, I need to break that down into tasks and quick ticks. Sure, sure. So therefore I need to contact engineers and get my demos and mm -hmm. other voice uh, mm -hmm. spots and radio spots and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I try to have a routine, but being freelance and being able to work from home is really difficult. Mm. And it's not as if I am freelance whereby I can get up, go to a coffee, ha uh, coffee house. <laughs> yeah, I coffee. don't even think that's a thing, a coffee shop or a cafe and work from there mm -hmm. because my studio is at home. Mm -hmm. So, and then my problem is, is if I'm in the studio, I'll just pop out and grab something to eat from the fridge and then oh, I'll just put a load of laundry on and oh I better mm -hmm. just quit oh and I didn't do and 
And then next thing you know, and I'm also that person whereby if something then, oh, it's 12.34, mm -hmm. well, I won't do anything until one. Yeah, yeah. So then I, it, I'm actually not very good. Whereas if I get up, same as you, right? If I get up and if I do go to the gym mm -hmm. or I go and play paddle, mm -hmm. I do something that's then out of the house. Mm -hmm. I do, I kind of get all of that messiness out of my brain mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. So then when I come back to the house, mm -hmm. I will then, I probably then take a good hour, two hours to shower and have food and whatever. And then I'm like, fine. Then I just plow on for the rest of the day. Nice, nice. Without distractions, are you able to, to maintain that uh, flow state or whatever? So I don't have any, we were talking about Apple Watches. I don't have anything come through on my Apple Watch except for phone calls. Mm -hmm. um, and what I will do is my iPhone will go on to, you can change your settings, right? Yeah, your yeah. personal settings. So I have it so that only my family members can break through and phone, mm -hmm. which is quite annoying. Oliver Page, my brother, because he will ring through and I think someone's dead. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh yeah, no, it's just for I just say hi. And I'm like, because then as you know, one distraction, it, there's, a, there's a study and it's something like it takes you like 34 minutes to get back. Into a flow? Into your flow wow. after a distraction. Wow. So I have that off and the way I have it set is that nothing comes up. So even if you tap your phone, mm -hmm. there's nothing on the screen. There's no bubbles, buttons, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's my thing. I'm addicted to my phone as most people are, but I am 100% addicted to my phone. Mm -hmm. So I will literally like touch. Um, I don't have any buttons or flashes come up on my, or noises on my laptop either. Mm -hmm. Um, for emails, that's obviously a voicing thing as well. Because if you're mid flow voicing and then ding comes up on your laptop, yeah, yeah. the worst. Yeah. So no, I am very easily distracted. I'm probably mildly on the scale of ADHD, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. self prescribed or diagnosed. And so it does take me a lot. Mm -hmm. But then there are some times I'll wake up in the morning, grab a coffee at 7, 7.30, mm -hmm. go straight into my office. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, it's 4 p.m. I'm still in my pajamas mm -hmm. and I'm smashing out voiceovers and nice. pitches and emails and whatnot. Nice. Um, when it comes to like the emceeing and TV presenting, I try to be as organized as possible for the week. Mm -hmm. That's in terms of even my outfits, what I'm going to be wearing. Mm -hmm. I'll have them all laid out with the shoes, with the accessories and everything, because that then is that the whole Steve Jobs thing, right? And mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg, they mm -hmm. only wear the same outfits yes. because that's one less decision to make mm -hmm. each day. I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're wearing the tightest pink t-shirt I've ever seen that's in my true. life. That's true, it's very tight. It's very tight. It's very tight. I actually You know there is an adult section in most <laughs> clothes shops, right? Good one. <laughs> you know True Classic, the, the brand True I Classic? I don't know. They have these ads out, they're really good ads, by the way. Sure. But anyway, I saw this offer, you get 15 t-shirts for like 300 uh, okay, US dollars. Okay, fine. So I bought them in the children's section. Or? I bought them six months ago, right? <laughs> oh, okay. And I've been going to the gym like <laughs> five times a week yeah. and eating a lot. So suddenly these mediums are like smediums, <laughs> and now I'm like, oh god! Now I need to order another batch of large size. It's which is good. I'm not, I'm not complaining about the gains. No, I'm no, no. It. Yeah, yeah. Hench. Yeah. It's all about being hench. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's very funny. They are. It is a tight T-shirt. It's super tight. Like. I can feel it, you know, it's like strang <laughs> strangling me. Like. And the irony is, is I'm wearing like a massive teacher. I look like a supply art teacher at school. <laughs> supply art. Do you know what I mean? You know, like the woman when your real teacher isn't there. And so they bring in that, like oh, yeah, replacement. the replacement teacher. Mm -hmm. We called them a supply teacher at wow, school. Okay. And I can't, that's the kind of vibe I'm giving off at yeah. the moment. Chilled. Yeah. Yeah, chilled. I'd be chilled. I'd be a chilled teacher. I couldn't teach. Huh? Why not? because I'd, I'd have no patience. I say that, I couldn't teach children. Obviously I coach voiceovers, right? So mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I've just gone into online coaching. Mm -hmm. um, even then I'm not super, you know, I'm really still working on my lesson plans because mm -hmm, I go mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, teaching children, well, hands down to you. Yeah, I mean, that must be tough. Yeah. And shout out to uh, Anna Schofield for that, by the way. Anna Schofield, the dream, school of little voice. Yes. Yeah, she's awesome. Yes. By the way, how amazing is Anna's voice? Yes. Listen, I've tried to, I've tried to do it there. Yes, yes. Anna Schofield. It's actually, like, it's actually close. No, no one's close to Anna Schofield in voices. Mm. She's unreal. Mm. And it doesn't help as well. Do you know what doesn't help with Anna Schofield is also in real life, she's stunning. Like she is beautiful. She's elegant. She's funny. She's intelligent. She's really annoying. And she's a great person. Oh, who cares? <laughs> I'm all up for female empowerment, but Anna Schofield, do you need to leave some of it for the others? No, she's awesome. I have a lot of time for Anna. She's going to love that. Shout out to you, Anna. <laughs> 
Katie, I'm, I'm curious. We, we spoke about that really briefly uh, earlier. And I know you mentioned that you do a lot of work for overseas as well. Mm. Now, I've seen you also uh, just jump into the booth. You know, I remember once you asked me, do you mind if I just use the booth for like 10 minutes? I have a quick audition to record. I was oh, like, I no, no, please go ahead. It. You had your microphone with you. So you went in, recorded your audition and everything, and you sent it. Or I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But my question is related to the shift that we saw in our industry. So as you know, we used to go physically to mm -hmm. a studio and have the client, the agency, the client servicing, the producer, 15 people on a session. <laughs> yeah. And after COVID, the rise of remote recording sessions has been like more and more. Uh, For sure. Yeah. So how did you deal with that? Um, I already had a, a home studio anyway. Um, I was very fortunate to have this little maid's room in, in my house. And so I was like, right, I chucked a load of cur curtains around and tented the ceiling and I was happy. And um, Digby Taylor, obviously a voice that we know is very famous in Dubai, introduced me to this USB mic, mm -hmm. Yellow Tech, which was a godsend, mm -hmm. um, which meant all of a sudden I could record anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, then off the back of that, I just you know, looked for a load of uh, agencies online and mm -hmm. like, okay, I can audition for agencies in America and mm -hmm. Canada and the UK. And I do a lot with um, an agency in Sweden randomly. Wow. Yeah, really random. Um, I, so I liked it. It, it. it worked for me and COVID was good for me. And, and um, <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of COVID related voiceovers happening during, mm -hmm. during the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so it didn't actually change much for me. Mm. However, then coming out the back of it was, like I said to you, I, I don't do anything in person anymore. And actually there was a studio not so long ago towards the end of last year. And they said, can you come in person? And I was like, no, and not, not for being stubborn. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know the parking's an issue yeah, sometimes, yeah, of course. but it was not, but it's, it's just not needed. Mm -hmm. Um, Live sessions are fine on Zoom. You know, oh my goodness, I did one on Zoom and there was like 11 people on there, which is fine if they're not all talking and giving the feedback at the same mm -hmm. time. Too many cooks, right? Too many cooks, for sure. But a lot of the time, it's just the one person and they'll give the direct feedback mm -hmm. and then they will then say, oh, hey, Joe, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And then just ask a direct person instead mm -hmm. of everyone's opening mics or whatever. Sure, sure. Um, so no, not not a, not a huge difference. In fact, it's you know it's opened it up to me. I think COVID, case in point, you know I started a podcast just after COVID, and everyone started their own podcast. And I know it became a bit of a joke, but also why not? Yeah. You know all these DJs started doing live DJ sets and YouTube and Instagram live. Mm -hmm. Amazing, more mm -hmm. power to you. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where I don't know. It's almost like people who would say, you know. I don't care about your workout. You don't need to post your workout on Instagram. Mm. Don't worry about it. Or I don't care about your food, what you eat in a day. Or... I don't care about your baby. Mm -hmm. it's what <laughs> I, like, I don't want to see your baby. I don't need to know that your baby is however many weeks old. and all. Mm. But equally, I don't care. I'm not going to tell that person that. Mm. You're allowed to post what you want. Let people do what makes them happy. Live and let live. If it's not offending, if it's not offending anyone, hurting anyone, mm. you can always mute them or, or I don't know, scroll past it. It without worrying about it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so that that was my big thing about the whole podcast thing oh someone else has got a podcast who cares you mm -hmm. don't need to listen to it mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. um there was a guy and as i'm sure you've seen it on instagram and all, all the sort of pages whereby there's there was a, an old guy it was him and his friend and they started a youtube channel when they were just traveling and i think they had something like 17 followers mm -hmm. but they their channel was lovely and they would talk about where and they were retired right over mm -hmm. 60 and it was so lovely mm -hmm. And they didn't do it for anybody else. They didn't want the likes. They didn't want the followers. They didn't want the monetization. They were doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, the good tanks, good news or puberty or someone just, you know, posted it. Mm -hmm. and now they've got loads of followers and mm -hmm. it's great. But they weren't doing it for anybody. They mm -hmm. were doing it for them. So just let people do what they want. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Actually, uh, it's funny you say that because uh, I don't know who said that quote, but... Well, in short, it's when you focus on service and when you focus on giving value, 
you get much more than you expect. Mm. If you're too focused on uh, how you look and how you appear and, uh, well, did I say the right thing? Did I say something wrong? Then you'll be self-conscious and you're not focusing on giving value. You're focusing on yourself. Receiving value, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh. Ah, Simon Sinek. Have you heard of him? I've heard the name. The School of Happiness, uh, not the School of Happiness. Um, anyway, I'll remember it and I'll tell you later. There's people screaming at their podcast right now going, yeah. who is this person? We hate you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but si uh, Simon Sinek, mm. shout out to this guy. He has an online course called The Art of Presenting as well. Okay. And that's where he mentions that when you focus on giving rather than taking, you yeah. know, uh, are they, uh, they going to applaud for me? When you focus on that, yeah. it's not a good thing. Yeah. You know? When you're focused on giving value, the people will sense that. Yeah. You know? Your yeah, listeners yeah, yeah. will sense that and they'll give you power in a way. I mean, it's cl classic networking as well. You know, if you're going to network and if you go specifically to a room to network for whatever reason and you're going specifically to sell your podcast mm -hmm. or your audio studios, for example it's not going to work because you're so it's you're in your own head and it's sell 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 and they'll be like oh we met we met this guy called joe and he just wouldn't like stop talking at us and it doesn't give a good impression um, impression thank mm -hmm. you so much mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. if you go and it's like in a network if you're going to go to network what can you do for that person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and you want to learn more about them and in turn it will come back round and, da, 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 and it would all work so. absolutely absolutely so katie you've recorded for some of the biggest brands across the globe and in the UAE. Yes. Now, I'm not going to name all of them, but uh, you've <laughs> recorded for Ikea, Uber, Samsung, uh, Baby Shop. I'm just naming a couple yeah, here. Yeah, fine. Thanks. I love the way that you've done your homework. It's <laughs> thank nice. you. Thank you. Was there any particular recording session that stood out for you? Maybe in terms of the project, the type of project, or a great client? Was there anything like that that I've stood got, out? Yeah, I, there is one one that massively stood out for so many reasons, and, and I'll go into them. Um, I am soon to be, well, it was launched as a beta version, but back in 2019, I think, and I, it still hasn't come to fruition. So I am the AI voice for the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland in the UK yeah. for their digital human, is mm -hmm. what they're called. Okay. So... You know when you... Uh, name like Eva for Emirates NBD? I was just about to say, oh, yeah, naming okay. no names, because I hate Eva. Okay. Eva is not nice, mm. because Eva doesn't listen to you. So if anyone from Emirates NBD is listening, like, the concept of Eva is great. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly, so Royal Bank of Scotland has Cora in the UK. Okay. And Cora, you can call her, mm -hmm. um, you know, hi, how can I help you today? And you go... Mm -hmm. I've lost my credit card. And then mm -hmm. she went, okay, I'll put you through to someone. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Um, now, what you can do, what they're doing now is that you can open your laptop or your phone on the app, the Royal Bank of Scotland app, and there's an actual person there. It's an avatar. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like me because uh, the company that created the avatar is a company called Soul Machines down in New Zealand mm -hmm. who actually did Avatar, the movie. Wow. So the so well, she looks like a Kiwi woman, but and so obviously they she's had to be in the studio with the dots so they could mm -hmm. uh, map her face or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but I'm the voice. Okay. Now uh, there's a few things about it. Was I was hired by an online agency who are based in Canada. Mm -hmm. I the company was Soul Machines, who's down in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I had to do live recording sessions with a sound engineer because he was so ingrained with Soul machi Machines. He knew exactly how I needed to record, right? Okay. So I couldn't mm -hmm. be left to my own devices mm -hmm. because it was so specific. Sure. He was based in LA. His name was Jim. And sadly, he passed away a couple of years ago and we had mm -hmm. an amazing 18 months together. Mm -hmm. um, so he was based in LA and it was for, and I'm based in Dubai and it was for a company in the UK. So mm -hmm. first of all, that's amazing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. we, that you can do all of that online, literally mm -hmm. uh, across the world, mm -hmm. right? Um, and because it's an AI, so it's a Siri basically. So I had to, I took 14 months to record the dictionary. Wow. Um, because wow. you had to have different ways of saying, okay, okay okay, okay, because of the way the sentences would work. Sure, sure. Um, so to give you an idea, the idea is, is that you can open your laptop and you say, hey, Cora, um, I've lost my credit card. Mm -hmm. And then I go, 
that's okay. Do you have your account number handy? And they go, no. And so depending on their answer, no, it would be, okay, let me see what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. This is that. Mm -hmm. Or yes, I do. That's great. Mm -hmm. Please enter it in the keyboard below. That kind of thing. Nice. It was amazing and that is going to be phenomenal and it was when they did their press release back in 2018 it was all over like bbc and all the main like news websites and stuff in the uk but it hasn't come to fruition yet i mean it's going to take a long time because you're sure. dealing with people's banks and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and me um another really weird one i've done which i think i've spoken to you about before is i um, the voice of the fire drill at the Coca-Cola headquarters in Belgium. Wow. I mean, it's so random. So random, yeah. And it's literally like, you know, this is not a drill, please move to your... I mean, I don't say it like that, but it's almost like... How do you say it? Um, that's a good point, actually, because you have to be firm, mm -hmm. but not let people panic. Sure. So how... I can't even remember how I did it, but it would be along the lines of, this is not a fire drill, proceed to your nearest emergency exit, leave all your belongings behind. That kind of thing. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's really funny how, and you know this, like being a voiceover, how you can talk normally and then immediately go into the voice that you need to go into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of them is um, zero gravity, of which I'm not allowed to say I'm officially the voice of zero gravity, unlike some people claim they're the voice of whatever. But you are. Well, I'm not because there's also Michelle has done a lot of them. Yeah, and sure, Michelle there's, Merrick. Yeah, exactly. Um, of whom I've never met, by the way. Really? I've never met Michelle. I've met so many, or majority of voiceovers in Dubai. Um, but I've done uh, zero gravity adverts for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really funny, like, I can talk to you exactly as I am now, but the minute I go into it, I'm like, zero gravity from day to night. Like, awesome. I can go, like, straight into it. Awesome. Off of it, because I've just done it for so long. Awesome. Is there a script that you remember that you could have our listeners and viewers listen to? I don't think so. Something you can mimic, or a, a catchphrase, let's say, a catchphrase that you remember from Zero Gravity that you could just, like... Um, well, Zero Grip... Um, I want you to show up. It's always off. like, sip up, sip the sunshine... Soak up the sun. Soak up the sunshine, sit the sunset or something. But it was always, um, at the time, which again is showing my age, it was Dubai's newest day-to-night venue. Wow. And it was Zero Gravity's 10 years old now. But it was always, yeah, Zero Gravity is, is that from day to night. And it was always some DJ. You know, it was <laughs> DJ EZ. And you've got to be, like, really cool when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't. I did a lot for Dubai Festival City Mall. Mm. And that was always naming the brands, mm -hmm. Sandro, Mage. Uh, and then like some of them, I've never heard of these brands. You no, know. Me neither. Yeah. Dubai, Festival City Mall. Um, I do like the Ikea ones because the Ikea ones were, they always liked them to be like super conversational and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it would always be for the days when, you know, for the days that aren't going quite how you wanted and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had a dream come true uh, a year ago, as you know, where I had my first, but uh, I voiced my first ever TV advert in the UK, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I can't even remember the line, but it was just one line and it was a global campaign, but I was just the UK voice because obviously they had their regional voices for America and Australia and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and it was for HelloFresh, which is funny because I say, Hello and not hello. Okay. So it's almost as if it's spelled H A L L O. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello Fresh. Um, and that was amazing because I had so many people, because I'm from the UK, had so many people like, oh my God, I think I just heard your voice. Like, oh my God, are you doing the Hello Fresh advert? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's awesome when that happens, right? I love it. Somebody when... sends you a WhatsApp or a message. Hey, I heard your voice on yeah. this or this ad. Yeah. I always joke and I love it. Um, Chris Fade, Virgin Radio, is a very good friend of mine. And I always remember when he said to me, you're on Virgin Radio more than I am. Because I was, you know, it was every commercial was either me or yeah. Anna or, or whatever. That's or Digby. Funny. Yeah. To be on Virgin Radio more than Chris Fade. That's funny. <laughs> I love that so much. It's funny. So, Katie, this is a question that I ask every guest at the end of the episode. And this is really important because I want to showcase value, inspiration, and insights into our industry. Okay, and you okay. think it's a good idea to ask me, do you? Yes, I do. Okay. I do, actually. So, let's say somebody comes to you 
with zero experience, okay? They don't know where to start. Well, they the do of. for my coaching course. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. Good plan. Sign up for a Katie Overeese <laughs> coaching course. That's correct. So someone comes up to you, Katie, please, with all your years of experience as an MC, uh, TV and radio presenter, and a voiceover talent, what are your three pieces of advice or the three main things that you would tell that person uh, in order for them to get started and to get used to that industry in a way? Into what? Into voiceover spe into specifically? Vo yes, into yeah, voiceovers. Okay, let's keep to voiceovers. Um, one question I'm always asked about voiceovers is, because people say I have a unique voice and, oh, you've got a great voice for voiceovers. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a voice for voiceovers. Mm -hmm. And actually one of my clients on one of my group coaching calls, he, you know, he doesn't think necessarily he's got a great voice for voiceovers, mm -hmm. but he's got quite a London accent. So it's super relatable, very usable. Yes, it's not for everything. And we actually made a joke whereby, you know, he perhaps wouldn't be used on a Mercedes advert, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. but, he it, but he would be used on a Ford advert. Mm -hmm. And that's nothing wrong, I'm not saying there's anything wrong, wrong with Ford. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, is Ford is more of a car about town, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what his voice lends itself to. Mm -hmm. So there's, and obviously we're very different because we have to listen to our own voices all the time. Mm -hmm. How many people do you speak to every day, regardless of when, the minute you tell them what you do, they go, oh, I hate the sound of my own voice. Mm -hmm. No one likes this. I tell you now, no one likes the sound of your own voice. I've been doing it 10 years and I will still listen to some things. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, yeah, I'm, cringe. Yeah, mm. it's, it's awful. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, there's a voice for everything. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you have to be this commercial radio voiceover. You don't. Mm -hmm. You can get there if you want. There's also a niche to each one, right? Again, one of my other group coaching clients, and I didn't mean that as a second plug, but I genuinely is like... She finds it very hard to show the emotion of, you know, this weekend at Eurosport. You know, mm -hmm. she can't do those high pitch. But corporate reads and kind of IVRs, mm -hmm. sh chef's kiss. She's nice. unreal mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to be good at everything. I'm, I'm not very confident with character voices. Mm -hmm. I, do it, I do them to my cats mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, would, I, I, I excel at commercials and corporate reads. Mm -hmm. That's where I learn, earn my living and I just stick to it. I don't need to diversify mm -hmm. too much out mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, there's enough to go around. Mm -hmm. There's a huge amount. Now, even in Dubai, as we know, there are so many, or the UAE, there are so many voice talents, mm -hmm. um, so many. Mm -hmm. Most of us are here to help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I will still message different people and be like, hey, I've been asked to quote for this mm -hmm. and I've never quoted for something like that before. What would you say? Mm -hmm. um, even if they are, I mean, me asking you, for example, it doesn't matter because, A, you're a male, you know, you're an Arab, you have the, the expat American. Act. We're so different, mm -hmm. it's not even mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. But say I went to Anthea Ayash, the goddess of voiceovers, mm -hmm. To a lot of people, we sound very similar. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're British, uh, middle-aged women mm -hmm. with a South English accent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But equally, Anthea wouldn't, she would always help me. It's mm -hmm. not as if Anthea is going to go, well, why are you going to get that gig and not me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like guarding, uh, yeah. There's enough to go around. And there's, there, don't get me wrong, there are a few people within the industry, in any industry, mm -hmm. be it TV presenting, the things I do, videography, podcast studios, mm -hmm. there are always going to be people that don't like competition and won't help others. Yes. But there's enough to go around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the big conversation that you've recently touched on uh, on LinkedIn with regards to AI. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I mean, let's all think about 15, 20 years ago when apparently actors were going to be null and void because it was all going to be CGI and everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yes, of course, there are AI voices and they're very good. And there are AI graphic designers and all of this. Mm -hmm. No one can interpret a script like a human can. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. and like even I said to you is having a bit of a laugh on the recording session. Mm -hmm. Why not? Just make it a bit more human. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something like, don't be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And again, it's adapt or die, right? Mm -hmm. So um, embrace the fact that AI is coming. Mm -hmm. 
get your voice licensed, you know, make sure that you read your contracts correctly and you're mm -hmm. not going to be used and make sure that your voice isn't going to be used and your likeness isn't going to be used. You know, mm -hmm. check your contracts mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that. Don't just go in and just think, oh my God, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the final piece of advice I would say, this is again, I've said this on many podcasts that I've been uh, interviewed before for any industry is Yes, you are allowed to charge what you want, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are, again, with the voiceovers of Dubai, we try and have an industry standard. Mm -hmm. um, there is a case whereby, I don't know, if it's an English script, um, it will be a certain value versus an Arabic script or versus a Hindi script or something, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's slightly different, but we try and help each other out. We try and stick to the same things. Mm -hmm. Equally, people can charge what they want. Mm -hmm. And this is a massive thing for me. Everyone has to get into the industry somehow. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to get content for their demo somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, I'm using voiceovers specifically. Mm -hmm. um, what I don't like is when you're asked to do things free of charge. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me to do it free of charge. Mm -hmm. If it's a passion project, if you're a friend, I've got friends that still will offer to do me, but I'm, like, I'm not going to charge you for a voiceover. Mm -hmm. You've been a friend forever and I want to help you. Mm -hmm. But the fact you've offered to pay me, mm -hmm. says, that it goes, says it all. And mm -hmm. that goes for miles. Mm -hmm. But it's when you get these big brands mm -hmm. that will be, you know, oh, oh, we don't actually have a budget. Really? Okay, well then you better speak to Yvonne in accounts and see how she gets on rec <laughs> recording your voiceover. Mm -hmm. Because again, we've spoken about this before, whereby the amount of voiceover projects I'll get, mm -hmm. well, they've all of a sudden realized that Harold in procurement mm -hmm. isn't perhaps the voice they needed for their project. Mm -hmm. So then they instruct a professional voiceover. Mm -hmm. so, it, it, so it is a very interesting one whereby I don't, I don't, I don't like it in an industry where people undercut mm -hmm. but to try and get jobs. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't help any industry. Nope. Again, podcast, videography, I'm just looking around the room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But equally, you can't tell people what to charge. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's totally down to them. Mm -hmm. um, a slight side note, I was asked to uh, MC an event. Mm -hmm. It was being held at Atlantis the Royal. Nice. It was 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. They had flown a DJ over from Holland. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a budget for an MC. Oh, come on. It was a collaborative. Oh, it was a collaborative. There'll be so many people there and we'll put your name on this and we'll do the social mm -hmm. media. Sure. You're hiring Atlantis the Royal and mm -hmm. you haven't put a line item in for an MC. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny how that happens, right? <laughs> it does make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. But yes, I, I don't know if that was like three or five or seven pieces of advice there, well, but find a mentor. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not plugging myself again, but even, find a mentor. Mentors are there for a reason. And I actually <laughs> learned this from a podcast, The, My, the, the uh, Mindset Mentor. I love Rob Dahl. Uh, Rob, uh, Dahl. Rob Dahl. Rob Dahl Jr. Yeah. 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 Um, a mentor is, and he uses this analogy, when you need to go to the, a, a new supermarket, so you don't know the layout of the supermarket and you're going in to buy milk, mm -hmm. right? You could go in there and spend 10 minutes walking up and down the aisles, looking at the top and trying to find the milk that you need. Mm -hmm. Or you go straight to a member of staff mm -hmm. and he will say, yep, it's aisle two, second on your left. Mm -hmm. That is your mentor. Mm -hmm. Your mentor is there because they've done all the hard work mm -hmm. and they will help you get to where you are supposed to be a lot quicker. I love that. Mentors are brilliant. I love that. Mm. And uh, actually something else, I don't know who said this, but uh, basically every coach has a coach. A hundred percent. Every coach has a coach. A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Um, Cyrus is is my coach. He's actually my gym coach. He owns, he owns the gym that I go to, but he's a he's turned into a real kind of personal coach for me as well. Mm -hmm. And purely, funnily enough, it's that funnel thing. Like he spent thousands of dollars on coaching and mentorship and everything. And now I'm just reaping the benefits. <laughs> that's that, awesome. That's that. awesome, right? And that helps. But yeah. that's another example of someone sharing their knowledge as well. 100%. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, caveat, may I ask, mm -hmm. there are people that still come, that come to me now, mm. like, Going dry, by the way. Sometimes there's barely a hello. Mm. They're new to the country, new to the industry, and they want my contacts. 
Oh, do you? Yeah. Wow. I've yeah. spent 10 years creating really a really good network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because I'm good at what I do, mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to help you, but you've got to work a little bit for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah, so. of course. Thank you, Katie, for sharing your uh, 18 pieces of advice. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> we'll make sure to put a number, <laughs> a special number. If... No, but thank you so much, Katie. I want to take this time to acknowledge you. Thanks. Uh, you've been incredibly generous uh, with me and with our listeners uh, on this episode. I love the fact that you're sharing a lot of insights. You're sharing a lot of uh, about yourself as well. Mm. So thank you for that. Thank you. And I want to acknowledge you for all the work you're doing uh, live events, voiceover work. Uh, are you doing any uh, presenting on radio at the moment? Or? Radio I dipped out of um, because when you move from a breakfast show where there's lots of people to then doing a solo show, I mm -hmm. kind of lost the love for it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. It will come back, mm -hmm. um, but I did lose the love for it. Um, but TV presenting has kind of taken over. Um, and I'm, hell, I'm just grateful to have my voice back over the last couple of weeks because mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. bronchitis was not fun. Well, yeah, I remember you telling me you're yeah. sick. I'm grateful that you're not sick yeah. anymore. <laughs> because it, well, it was literally like that scene off of Friends with Rachel in season one. Like, I'm trained for nothing. So if I lose my voice, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I could be a hand model. Yeah, yeah. Why That's not? not good for audio, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with audio. <laughs> Nothing to do with audio, yeah. But it's been good fun. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I'm Katie. loving the Voices of Dubai. It's exciting. It's been a real passion project for you for a few years. And to see it actually Absolutely. come to fruition is awesome. Thank you. Soon you'll be able to afford T-shirts from the adult section. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you for that. Maybe they'll sponsor me after seeing how tight this T-shirt is. <laughs> <laughs> this man needs T-shirts that fit him. <laughs> Send them to Johaj. Uh, I live. Uh, I'll put up the address. No more baby gap. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. <laughs>